what's going on guys we're doing a stump the chump today but before i get into that i wanted to just mention i was recently on ben johnson's podcast it's called the perpetual chess podcast he's been doing it for quite a few years uh so i was honored to that, that he reached out to me and um i wanted to interview me so if you want to check that out i'm going to put a link to to his website it's also available on apple uh, spotify all, all the major podcast platforms so you can check it out over there or just click one of the links down below but yeah i really appreciate him uh interviewing me and you can check that out um if you want um but yeah having said that let's go ahead and jump into uh stump the chump all right guys first position is from esteban now before i start analyzing this position i want to mention a couple of changes to stump the chump so first of all i'm gonna go with three minutes instead of five minutes this is to train myself to think faster so i've i noticed after my last tournament i really struggle with the tactics and calculating and getting into time trouble and just making mistakes and i think one of the things that's going to help that is being able to analyze a little bit quicker so i'm lowering the time on all of these i'm going to just do three minutes and hopefully that'll be enough i want to train myself to think faster i'm also going to be trying to follow a process where i identify candidate moves so what that means is at the start of the position the first thing i'm going to be doing is identifying what i think are the options instead of kind of randomly looking like well maybe this is a move maybe this is a move i'm just going to identify the candidate moves then go back and analyze them and so it's it's a little bit different than what i've been doing i'm going to try to follow um an approach from a book that i've been reading if you want more information about that i'm going to be putting that stuff on patreon as i go through my training uh process you can check that out over there but that's basically what what's going on so if the, my thought process is a little bit different than what you've been used to that you know that's what's going on so anyway having said that um like i said first position is from esteban let me go ahead and start the timer and here we go three minutes all right so uh we got two bishops for the rooks for the rook which is great but white has a lot of pawns uh this is under attack king is kind of cut off so candidate moves we can attack the rook we can go check, win the rook. I see that. We can save our bishop. Um, do we have any other candidate moves? Um, I don't think so. I see one. I see move this. Or I see king here. Okay, uh, we're going to start with this one. He takes, I take. I have a piece against a whole bunch of pawns. It's probably still winning, although it's not going to be easy. Other move, king g8, he takes this, I take this, he takes this, completely losing. King g8, yeah, so king g8 completely out. This is still a possibility. Moving this bishop somewhere. Um, hmm. So if I move the bishop, let's just say, I don't know, here, we have the threat to fork the uh, king and a rook. I'm trying to see if there's a way I can like force the king to step into a discovered check and then do something else. Not really seeing that. So bishop d5. Hmm. I mean, let's just say I did that. He's just going to move the rook somewhere. And then what? King can always run over here. So, I mean, I think in a game, I, I'm going to play this. And just do the best I can with the bishop against the three pawns. Um, yeah, so I have 45 seconds. I just want to see if there's any other candidate moves. That's kind of my goal for the, the start of this new thinking process. I want to make sure I don't miss candidate moves. So definitely this. I already looked at that. It's not really good. Moving the bishop somewhere. Here, here, here. Here. I don't think that makes any sense. Would there be any other candidate moves? Yeah, I'm not seeing it. So I'm going to go with bishop d5. Um, and let's see what Stockfish has to say. 
All right, and Stockfish says, Bishop d5 check. All right, cool. So we got the top move, although Bishop e3. Okay, so I was looking at the other one. Bishop a3. Now that's interesting. So, okay, yeah, so this is good. I'm glad I, I did this because I should have, I didn't think about this and I should have because if they just take it, which is the obvious reason why that wouldn't be a move, well, now I can go for the fork. And I mean, I was going to lose the bishop anyway. But now I've like completely messed up White's pawns, which is great. It's going to be a lot easier to stop them than if they're connected, right? So, yeah, that's why did I miss that move? It's just because normally you don't move bishops where pawns can take them. But in this case, I'm losing the bishop anyway if I'm going to go with bishop d5 check. So, hmm. All right, that's interesting. And then bishop d5 and bishop e3. Okay, so I guess we had the right idea. You know, best thing is to just do this and then try to survive the pawn storm. Um, it's not going to be easy because the king is so so far misplaced. But all right, cool. Let's find another position. All right, next position is from Adam. And by the way, I should mention Patreon members get priority to the Stump the Chump puzzle. So if you're sending me a, a Stump the Chump position and you're a Patreon member, just put that in the title and I'll choose yours first. Otherwise, it'll take a little while. I have a backlog of these. And so it's just going to take me time to get through them all. But anyway, uh, this position is from Adam. Let me reset the timer. Start it. And here we go. Okay, so Queen Rook uh, Black has four pieces. We have four pieces. Okay, so everything looks pretty even material wise. And what could be the candidate moves? Grabbing the free pawn is one move. Moving this queen, let's see. What's another candidate move? Would I want to play d4? Would I want to play rook f1? Would I want to like just move the queen here to like kind of attack a bunch of stuff? Um, okay, so definitely one candidate move is just taking the pawn. Um, I guess queen h4 looks like it. I mean, actually, I don't know, knight g6. Maybe that doesn't make sense. Wow, what are even the candidate moves in this position? I mean, I'm not really worried about this discovered attack because the, it's pinning the rook, or it's pinning the knight to the rook. So the knight can't really move. I just take that. I don't think I have to move my queen. I mean, I could move the queen. I don't really like this bishop, so maybe d4 to try to... Uh, I don't know. Hmm. Weird position. Okay, uh, I'm seeing this as a candidate move. I'm not even really seeing any other moves. Rook f1, maybe to activate the rook. Yeah, I mean, I guess we can move this knight somewhere. Oh, we, oh, knight, knight g5. That's a move. Yeah, okay. So bishop takes knight g5. Rook f1. Okay, if I take it, what's black going to do? Take here, it doesn't really matter. Knight there, it doesn't work. This is pinned. If it moves the rook, I take the knight. Everything's jammed up. Knight moves, I can just take... Queen can't really move anywhere. This looks good. Uh, all right, let's check knight g5, though, because this also looks potentially good. If he takes, I take the rook. I think I'm pretty happy with that. Let's so check. Doesn't take. I'm threatening to take this. It's, it's going to put myself in a pin. It also threatens this. 30 seconds. Um, I can black defend the knight. I don't see any way. Oh, uh, there's a bishop here forking these. Uh, that's interesting. Ooh, this is complicated. Uh, we take here, or we take here, but then we lose this. Maybe I don't like that as much. Okay, let's take let's take bishop f7. I'm, I'm out of time. It's unfortunate. Okay. Well, yeah, I feel like it might be this. I'm just not sure in time pressure how to deal with this threat right now. Because if I just take that, I'm losing this and I'm like in a pin, which which just doesn't look awesome for me. So anyway, I said Bishop takes F7. Let's see what the engine says. All right, an engine says, oh, Bishop takes F7. How about that? So we got it. Um, 
Knight g5 is not on the list. Let's see why. Let's see if it was bishop e3. No, not on the list because of d5. d5. And if I just take it, what's the point? Knight takes. And if I just take it, this is the idea. Wow. Oh, that's nasty. That's, I didn't, uh, <laughs> so we can't move here. We can't move here. So we have to move into either this, which we, that's really bad, or this, which is also really bad. Just takes there and we're just getting mated. Ooh, that's nasty. So I guess you could say I got lucky. I didn't see the idea of D5. It's really, I mean, it's really logical, right? Like if I move the, the knight, off this diagonal and black can open that up with the queen or the knight, it's it's good for black. Hmm. Okay, so bishop takes f7 is the best move. What's the other queen h6 or d4? So I was thinking d4, but I didn't really know why. Queen h6, I don't necessarily understand the idea. What's the point of that? And what if black just tries to do like the same plan of d5? What are we going to do? Oh, we're going to take on e5. I see. So that's why d5 became an option for black. Because once we move the knight, we're not threatening e5 anymore. I see. So then d5 is, is good. Mm, but after like this, d5 makes no sense because we've got knight takes e5. We're forking these. Yeah, everything looks good for us. Okay. So that was a tricky position. Um... I got the right move, but I, I obviously didn't see all that stuff. Okay, well, let's go find another position. All right, next position is from Daniel. Uh, Black has just played bishop g4. Let me start the timer here, and here we go. All right, so what's happening? Relatively even. We don't want to get checkmated, obviously. Um, okay. Is that even a threat? We can move here. Yeah, it looks like a threat. So we have to watch out for that. We 94 looks like a good move, so that's definitely a candidate move because it defends the rook, attacks the queen, threatens a nasty move here. So I like 94 right away. Um, are there any other candidate moves though? First of all, I don't think we want to let black do that. Um, King to f1, maybe king f1, um, definitely knight e4. Let's see what else could be a candidate move. I'm not seeing a lot of candidate moves. I'm seeing knight e4. Um, okay, so knight e4, queen here, king here. What is black going to play? Are there any checks? This one or this one? This one we can... We have to take it. Queen takes. And we can just move. I think we'll be okay. Eventually we can get safe. We still have this threat. So that's not too bad. What about queen here? We can block. Then that's checkmate. So we have to be careful. We can block here. Check. King goes here. That looks okay. So 94, check. This looks fine. We have a minute left. What happens if they play f6? I guess we can just... I guess we can just take it. With the pawn, probably. Keep that knight just, like, defending everything here. Um... I like 94. I don't see a problem with it. It could be missing something. Let's see. Queen here. What about queen here? No, that looks fine. Well, there is f5, though. We can on passant. Should be okay. All right. I think it's 94. Um, hopefully, I'm not missing, like, some candidate move. I mean, I, king f1, I didn't have time to calculate. But that's that's all I'm thinking as far as, like, candidate moves. So I'll be interested to see what uh, Stockfish says if there's something else. But um, let's go ahead and stop this.
and turn on the engine. All right, and the engine says 90E4. How about that? So 94, the only move that kind of keeps white in the game. Everything else looks pretty bad. King F1 was on there and rook to E2. Yeah, I didn't think about that as a candidate move. I thought that, what happens if the bishop takes it? Yeah, okay. It's just not really good. So yeah, only move, 94. And let's just see if I had this right. Queen check. Oh, not king f1. What happens on king f1? Bishop h3. Thought I saw this. And I guess I was thinking that this is like a really strong... Oh, queen f5. You have to go to e2. Still queen f5. Knight f6 check. You don't actually have anything. All right, because the black can just trade queens. Ooh, yeah, I kind of missed that. Kind of missed that. So the point was that 94, but on queen e3, you have to play this move. This move. And how is this better? Takes. Oh, you can't take because knight f6. Oh, that's, that's clever. Wow. Okay. See, this is the kind of mistake that I would make in a game, in a tournament. I would make some mistake like this. So, let's go back here. Now that I know the answer. Knight here. Of course, this is a move that I was thinking about. Blocking with the rook. Because you have a, an immediate threat of knight f6 check to win the queen, so the bishop captures is not an option. See, in my mind, I'm like, oh, I don't want to do that. I just lose the rook, but... That's the best move. Interesting. So knight e4 here. And does it matter which rook you... Yeah, this one you can't because that's checkmate. This one you can because you can just run over here. And you still... Let's see what happens now if they take this. Now you can... Yeah, it's it's pretty... Uh, you can just get it perpetual. Mm. So that looks really dangerous. You have no mate. Oh, bishop h5, I see. Oh, and this pinned. Wow. What a position. Okay. That was fun. That was good. Um, got the right move, but I totally missed this idea. Blocking with the rook. That was good. And I guess that's the only... Yeah, that's the only move. Because king f1... The reason is here you lose your rook anyway, but you lose it with check. So it gives black the option to move and there happens to be this really nice square queen f5 for the queen to go to which messes up your your threat because the queen is going to be yeah all right makes sense okay cool position uh let's go find another one all right next position is from jonas let me reset start the timer here we go black to play oh it's an end game okay wow so we know that we can we can win with the knight and the bishop so if we happen to get the bishop and then take the pawns even if we lose this it's fine Question is, how do we do that? I mean, it looks like white's just going to start pushing this pawn. If we take it and we lose the bishop, it's just going to be, I guess, a draw. Um, so what? let's see, candidate moves. Knight here, knight here. King can't move over. Um... Any other options for me here? There's no like weird checkmate traps, no. Okay, so let's just start with this one. H6, check. King could go in front, which I think we'd be fine. We just take this, or we can go here. We take this, it goes there. We go here and we're fine. We stop it. Got the two pieces, everything looks good. So that looks pretty good. What about this one? H6, ah, we can go check. Uh, and then take the bishop here again. So that looks maybe even better going to this square. Although we can also go there from here. We don't have to go there. Okay, so this gives us two options. This gives us this as an option. I don't know if we need that. Does it even matter? Does it even matter? Let's say white doesn't push the pawn.
and moves the bishop, let's just say here to defend the pawn. Check. King goes there. How are we going to get the pawn now? If the knight was here, does it change anything? Not really. Interesting. I mean, I guess we could move king here to stop the bishop from going there. But then h6 happens, and I don't know what we're doing. It's just going, right? No, so we can't do that. So I think we're going to move the knight. Um, relocated here. The bishop would be there. We could move our king. And the king's going to come over, though. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. If it's any game, I'm going to play this. But I don't know. I don't actually know. Let's see what Stockfish says. Okay, the move is bishop to h4. What? What in the world is the idea behind that move? Okay, let's just start with the obvious. h6. Knight of three, h7, 95 check, king h6, bishop g5 check, king h5, and then your king comes up. So, okay, so basically, there was never a threat for this to become a queen because you could, even if you wasted a move, you still had time to do this and your king can come in. All right, that's fine. But why do we have to move our bishop here? What, like, what's the idea? Let's just say the bishop moves somewhere, yeah. What are we doing now? We're going back. Or we're playing knight e2. Okay, knight e2. So we have that threat, obviously. So let's say the bishop just moves somewhere. Bishop, yeah, sure, f3. Lots of moves are winning. Let's go knight to g3. Let's say the bishop just moves here. What, what is our plan? Knight goes to e2. Bishop goes here. Now we have to play knight to g1. I'm, I'm like not sure what's going on. Bishop g5. Let's just say, I don't know, the bishop moves here. Knight h3. I'm trying to understand the idea, and I'm, st I'm still not getting it. It, lo it looks like it's... Eventually, you can, like, maneuver your knight somehow, and sort of like a zug swinging and... I don't know. I, I don't understand. Somebody understands this one? Um, in the comments, let me know. I'm having a hard time, though. <laughs> but... Only move that Stockbridge likes is bishop h4. So it, it has to do some something with like wasting a move, it looks like, so that your knight can get in the right position. Just seems weird to me because I don't quite understand why white can't just waste a move with their bishop too. But apparently, I don't know. That's a that's a rough position. Um yeah, but I was uh stumped, didn't see it, so yeah, uh, nice position, Jonas. Um, I think with that one, I will call it a day. Um, let me know if you guys like this new format with three minutes, if that's too fast or if that's okay. Um, but yeah, I think it kind of forces me to to speed up my thinking process, which I think is what I, I need long term. It should help me kind of think a little bit faster. So anyway, um, thank you guys. As always, stay sharp, play smart. Take care.